because uh, I was looking at this today, I think Mining Intelligence compiled like the 10 largest projects right now worldwide. And I think this puts you guys right up there in, in the top or one or two spots, at least it's it's up there. Uh, but what's going for you is that you're, you're, you're not uh, in a far off jurisdiction. You're not in, in Africa or Indonesia or in Russia. You're in Alaska. So you're in the US. The US needs nickel at, at an incredible rate. Uh, so to have a project, uh, you know, kind of that now is right up there at the top, arguably at the, the very top, uh, and certainly even in con uh, comparison to a lot of Canadian projects too, you're right up there at the top. This is a huge uh, achievement in a very short period of time. So welcome to the show, uh, Mr. Beischer. It's great to have you on. And uh, let's just get into this because it's it's a big news. It's a significant increase. Let you kind of walk us through that. Yeah, it is a significant increase. You know, our maiden resource was published in uh, November of last year. That was based on historical drill holes only. Uh, historical, but the data was excellent, uh, no, no question uh, there, and, and that's why we, we were able to publish uh, that resource back then. And it was really two resources, uh, two economic pit shells that were mm, maybe a two and a half kilometers, mile and a half apart. And uh, the drilling that we had done in the summer of 2023 uh, was to be added to this resource. So, you know, we got our assay results uh, through the course uh, of the fall. And then our consultant, uh, Stantec, uh, you know, famous uh, uh, international mining consultancy, uh, has been crunching the numbers for us. And um <clears throat> And the numbers were good, uh, to, somewhat to our surprise. Uh, we were able to join those two deposits together. That There was uh, our drilling, but uh, a few other scattered historical holes that allowed us to, to, or allowed the consultant to actually infer a resource right across the whole distance. So the upshot was a, a deposit that's uh, just over four kilometers in length. Uh, it's uh, mostly about 300 meters thick. One uh, big slab of uh, mineralized rock, disseminated nickel, copper sulfides with a little bit of cobalt, platinum, and, and palladium. And uh, it adds up to a lot of metal. Uh, we went from the November uh, resource calculation that was uh, 1.5 billion pounds of nickel in the ground to over 8 billion pounds uh, total. Uh, if you take into a, account the other metals and do an equivalency calculation, we had 2 billion pounds of nickel equivalent metal. Now we have over 10 billion pounds uh, of, of nickel equivalent metal and you know that's that's a lot of metal and so we're very very pleased uh, with the results of our you know well really first nine months of work uh, as a company it's uh, worked out uh, quite well but there's some other features uh, about um, what was revealed that I, I could go on to describe if you like Yes, well, I, I just want to com comment that because uh, I was looking at this today, I think Mining Intelligence compiled like the 10 largest projects right now worldwide. And I think this puts you guys right up there in, in the top or one or two spots, at least it's it's up there. Uh, but what's going for you is that you're 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 not uh, in a far off jurisdiction. You're not in, in Africa or Indonesia or in Russia. You're in Alaska. So you're in the U.S. The U.S. needs nickel at, at an incredible rate. Uh, so to have a project, uh, you know, kind of that now is right up there at the top, arguably at the, the very top, uh, and certainly even in con uh, comparison to a lot of Canadian projects too, you're right up there at the top. This is a huge uh, achievement in a very short period of time. Well, thanks. Yeah, the, the one uh, company we track particularly closely is Canada Nickel. They're, they're several years ahead of us. They've got a similar uh, deposit. Uh, of disseminated uh, nickel sulfides. Uh, they've got a positive feasibility uh, and uh, done a fantastic job of 
uh, bringing in strategic investors, uh, Samsung, uh, Anglo-American, uh, and, uh, and now Agnico Eagle Gold Mines. And so I think those companies have realized, like I have, that um, this is, the style of deposits is the next generation of nickel mines uh, to come in, M much as uh, in the 1950s and 60s, the mining industry migrated from <clears throat> mining high-grade copper veins uh, or, or you know, high-grade deposits to uh, large bulk tonnage porphyry copper deposits. And now that's where a huge part of our copper is mined worldwide. Um, you know, there's there's people that are naysayers about uh, low-grade nickel deposits, uh, but uh, I imagine there was naysayers back in the 1950s and 60s too. Yeah. Said, oh, those things will never make money. But then, you know, we come to realize, well, it really is a gigantic source of copper. This is a gigantic source of nickel, and uh, our society needs it. And and uh, ultimately, you you can make good money with these types of deposits. Uh, you know, they they are uh, large earth moving operations, uh, but it is an a, an economy of scale, and and they 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 can make uh, good money. But um, as usual in the mining business, uh, the higher the grade, the higher the concentration of the metals, the better. And uh, fortunately for us, I think we've been able to uh, identify that there is a somewhat higher grade core to this deposit uh, right from surface. And uh, it's probably, you know, maybe uh, 10 to 15 percent higher uh, than uh, the, the rest of the deposit. Uh, and so uh, could be mined early in, in the sequence, uh, which would allow more rapid payback, which is very important in the overall long-term project economics. And further, uh, you know, um, if we were to mine that high-grade portion, there would be no waste rock to move. We, we'd be mining just more or less the high-grade ore at the start. So I think that will really help uh, the economics. We haven't really... Uh, uh, started uh, any sort of economic analysis. Uh, we'll begin that after receiving the first of our metallurgical test work results, which will be coming up in the fairly near future. Uh, another interesting uh, factor from that that came out was that the the strip ratio is also being reduced from 371 to 151. Yeah, well, um, when we uh, first made the calculation back in November, remember it was two separate uh, pitch shells, and so uh, by by uh, the, the the way it goes is uh, that would mean removing a fair bit of waste rock to to get at uh, the the valuable rock, but by making it one big pit, we were to eliminate able to eliminate uh, a lot of uh, that potential waste rock rock removal, and. Um, and therefore significantly reduced uh, uh, the stripping ratio down to just 1.5 to one. And as I mentioned, because the deposit is so thick, uh, if in the early years of a mining scenario, we'd be mining nothing but or we wouldn't have to strip anything away. And you'd mentioned, you know, Canada nickel with uh, Agnico and, and whatnot, but also like FPX nickel did a deal with Sumitomo metals. You have PDAC coming up around the corner. You have a huge news display. I'm sure uh, people can kind of put two and two together that you're going to be courted. You're going to be talking to all sorts of people moving forward because uh, this isn't as though you've poked a few holes. Oh, okay, we're done. You've just started into this as well. So this this has grown like monstrously big very quickly. And there's this is just the, the first really stage. It is, yep. And I, I suspect uh, uh, we'll be approached by... Uh, strategic partners. Uh, I, I would think uh, there's other battery companies besides Samsung that will uh, like to lock in uh, offtake if if they can get it. I, I mean, to me, everything's going a little backwards. Uh, car and battery companies are spending literally billions and billions of dollars constructing battery plants, but nobody's really sure they've got the raw materials to put into these plants. And, and so they're at risk. And I would think that they would really uh, breathe uh, better if they like they can lock in um, uh, a source of, of uh, nickel 
especially right here in the United States. I mean, the, the federal government right now is uh, promoting uh, electrification of our society, uh, but it's also putting some strings on it saying, well, the, the raw materials should come from free trade countries. And I really believe that they should because uh, most free trade countries uh, adhere to our uh, environmental ethics, uh, our modern uh, way of doing things in the in the mining industry that that uh, respects the land and, and the people uh, that might live nearby. So uh, I really do believe it is better in our backyard and uh, that uh, that uh, we as consumers should not accept uh, raw materials that come from countries. Uh, that don't share our environmental ethics and stewardship. So, uh, and, and that is what's going on in, in the nickel industry right now, unfortunately. And it certainly gives uh, us the chance to to shine, to to let people know that mining today is very different than 50 years ago, 100 years ago, obviously, uh, and that these, these projects can be done uh, economically, efficiently, and with high, high environmental standards. Uh, because after all, this is going towards an electrification for the climate. Uh, all of this ties together. And what's interesting is that for an investor or for someone who's looking at this, is that uh, disparity or that kind of, uh, uh, you know, not the recognition of not understanding that the battery story is taking off this one direction, but yet they there isn't this stream of metals that are just, you know, coming from the world. That presents a huge opportunity for people to look and go, the, what what part of this supply chain is is the the toughest to fulfill, and not only on the sense of to find a discovery, but where is it going to be uh, the most ESG friendly, uh, one that does adhere to standards? Because I think we're only at the the cusp of that discussion of uh, that people are going to really pay top dollar for projects that are done correctly, done well, and that beat very stringent uh, uh, requirements. Right. You know, uh, you know, unfortunately, we we as an industry are still leaving with the the past bad uh, bad uh, uh, records uh, of companies uh, from early in in, in the nineteen hundreds. Uh, but it really is a, a much much uh, different industry now. I wish every person in the world could see what modern uh, mining operations look like uh, because they'd realize what these. Uh, these uh, mines produce very valuable commodities for our society, but they're really uh, environmentally uh, sound operations, well engineered, well monitored, and uh, very uh, protective of the environment. So um, I, I really think we do do modern mining right here in North America and especially in Alaska. So like you said, there's, there'll be lots of news flow. There's lots uh, happening. And I'm sure you've been on the phone all day today because, I mean, this is huge news. It's such a big story. Uh, and we, we're, we're going to do our best to get that out to as many people that will hear and listen, because this is part of the whole strategy of moving us through this energy transition and having projects like this, especially, you know, the difference, say, with Canada Nickel, uh, there's lots of bonuses with being in Canada, but there's a huge bonus for the U.S. Uh, as someone who has to import a ton of nickel to have a project on their own home soil that they control. Uh, and not only that, maybe there's access to grants and to funding and innovation and whatnot that comes from being on U.S. soil. That's right. Yeah, I think uh, that that's true too. You know, uh, I mean, there's some great projects in Canada. You mentioned FPX, and maybe that ultimately will supply nickel to the United States, uh, and and maybe others in Canada will too. I mean, right now the the United States imports 100% of the nickel that it consumes, and uh, fortunately, good neighbor Canada supplies half of that that nickel, but. You know, Canada's electrifying its society, too. It's building battery plants uh, all over Ontario and Quebec. And I'm just not sure, uh, you know, that the nickel is going to keep flowing south from Canada to the U.S. The U.S. is in a vulnerable position, and it really needs to get control of the situation by, first of all, by, by mining uh, its uh, mineral wealth at home. And uh, I think uh, our project gives a, a good opportunity for that to happen. 
was a huge opportunity here for people to arbitrage this reality compared to uh, uh, the desired result that people want. And uh, this is a big move in the right direction to show that there, there there's potentially a, a strong supply uh, coming from, from this uh, discovery here and this incredible uh, huge growth you've had. We look forward to any news that comes out between now and also you know, more results, uh, finding new targets and whatnot, and seeing if you can build this out even further. Great. Thanks, Andrew. We'll really be focusing on that that high-grade core and, and uh, increase our geologic understanding of it, but also uh, drill it at close enough spacings that we can really start to put some some hard numbers on, on the economics. And um, you know, and then there's still uh, the exploration potential to find the really high grade. Uh, you know that these big uh, magmatic systems uh, uh, can hide uh, some real treasures, and we know we've got this great big bulk tonnage uh, deposit. Uh, uh, you know, well, partially defined now, and uh, and uh, we'll find more of that material. But what I'd love to find is something really rich, and uh, it could very well be lurking uh, there. And uh, you know, uh, uh, even a modest size high grade deposit to help start uh, uh, to help pay the initial capital cost. Um, it just makes such a big difference on the overall mine economics. So. We'll definitely be tailing our exploration to uh, maximize the higher grade that uh, we know we've got and to find uh, new deposits of, of high grade massive sulfides. Well, what a way to start the year. And uh, we're really looking forward to see how the rest of the year plays out. Congratulations again. This is a, a huge day for your, uh, Alaska Energy Metals. And it's a real pleasure to get to speak to you today as well, because I'm sure the phone was ringing off the hook and you've, you've probably had to talk this thing to death. But we really appreciate you taking the time to, to speak with us. Oh, thanks very much, Andrew. Well, it's a pleasure to talk about it. So, uh, yeah, it's been a busy day, but I don't mind at all. It's uh, nice to have this little bit of success here. Excellent. Well, congratulations again. We'll talk to you real soon. Thank you very much. Take care. 